In this video, I will be covering top 10 tricky interview questions and answers on core Java concepts. If you are preparing for job interview for any of the role or in any company, you are in the right place to learn now. Please stay tuned till end of this video. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Career Hub. I am on the mission to help and support people who are eagerly looking to get a job. If you are new to this channel, please make sure to hit on the subscribe button and stay tuned till end of this video. Before we begin, please don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up to my channel. Now, without any further delay, let's get straight into the topic now. So here, I will be covering top 10 tricky and often asked Java interview questions. And I will be giving sample answers for all the 10 questions, providing code snippet wherever required for your reference. Alright, let's start with the first question. How can you make a class immutable? So this is one of the favorite questions for any of the interviewers. So here, an immutable class in Java is one whose objects cannot be modified after creation. So to create an immutable class, we have five steps to follow. So here we have listed out here, declare the class as final to prevent the inheritance. The second step is mark all fields as private and final to ensure their values are assigned only once. And then provide only getter methods for fields and no setters. Initialize all fields via a constructor. And the last step is to ensure that if the fields are mutable objects like collections or arrays, deep copies of them are returned from the getter methods. So for your reference, I have given a code snippet here. Please go through that for your better understanding. Second question is, what is a marker interface? So here, a marker interface is an interface with no methods or fields. It's used to signal to the JVM or the compiler that a class implementing it has certain properties. So in Java, we have serializable and clonable or examples of marker interfaces. So these interfaces provide a way for classes to communicate the metadata without actually enforcing the behavior. Now the third question is, why Java is not 100% object oriented? So this question is really very very important and 99% this question can be expected in any of the technical interview. So here, Java is not considered 100% object oriented primarily because it uses primitive data types like you know uh, int, float, pair, boolean, byte, double, long and short which are not objects. So in a purely OL that is object oriented language every data type is treated as an object including numbers and booleans as well. However in Java these primitives are not objects they don't have methods or properties like objects do and they are not derived from the root object class as well. So that's the reason Java is not 100% object oriented language. So question number fourth is can you override a private or static method in Java? So for this answer is slightly you should say no because you cannot override private or static methods in Java because we have certain reasons in private methods are not visible to subclasses so they cannot be overridden. And the second reason is static methods are bound at compile time and belongs to the class not the instance so they are not polymorphic right so you can hide a static method in a subclass but not override it question number five is why pointers are not used in java this is very very important question and has 100 percent you are going to get this question in your technical interview so so java does not support pointers because we have certain reasons the first is to avoid complexity and security risk so pointers can lead to unsafe memory access so for which it may cause crashes, memory leaks or make it easier to exploit the programs. So as you know, so Java's memory management is actually handled internally by the garbage collector, right? So which abstracts direct memory manipulations, hence pointers are discouraged in Java. So now the question number six is, what is JIT compiler in Java? So what is JIT? That is just in time compiler. It is part of the Java virtual machine that is JVM that improves the performance of the Java applications or the programs. So during grand time what happens it compiles the byte code into native machine code that is code specific to the operating systems or the hardware. So this process occurs only when, when 
a method is invoked frequently and leading to optimized performance. Next question is why is string immutable in Java? So we all know that string is immutable that is we cannot modify the objects once it is created. So strings objects are immutable for multiple reasons. So I am just trying to list it out here. So the first reason would be like security. Since strings are widely used in sensitive contexts like uh, file paths and network connections etc. Immutability prevents accidental or malicious changes. The second would be uh, thread safety. That is immutable objects can be shared among multiple threads without synchronization issues. And the last one I can say that string pooling that is where Java maintains a string pool to reduce the memory usage. Since strings are immutable, they can be shared between different parts of a program without any duplications. So now question number 8 is, does finally always execute in Java? The finally block in Java is designed to execute regardless of whether an exception is thrown, ensuring resource cleanup that is for example you, you can say closing files or network connections etc. So however, there are a few rare cases where finally may not execute such as if the JVM is terminated that is for example if you can say system.exit is called before it reaches the finally block or the second case can be if a fatal error occurs that crashes the JVM. So your answer should be no. So the question number 9 is what methods does the object class have? So the object class in Java is the root class for all objects that you know very well. So it provides several important methods that are inherited by all classes. So for example, I have listed out here. If you take clone, it creates a copy of the object and if you are taking equals, checks if two objects are equal. Like that we have hash code, to string, finalize, get class. So you can go through this later for your reference. So now the last question is question number 10. What is a singleton class in Java and how can we make a class singleton? So here singleton class is a class that allows only one instance to be created. This is useful in scenarios like logging, caching or managing a connection pool. So to create a singleton class we need to follow certain steps. One first we need to create a private static instance for the class and provide a public static method that returns the single instance and the third step is make the constructor private so that no other class can instantiate it. And for example, I have given the code snippet here for your better understanding. I hope these questions and answers will help you understand the essential Java concepts often discussed in technical interviews. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and leave a comment about the Java interview questions you have ever faced. Thanks for watching and good luck for your preparation. Thank you.